Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game that I have never seen before. Uh, it's from a simultaneous exhibition from 1996 that uh, Gary Kasparov was holding in uh, Israel. Uh, he had it uh, against 25 players and they were, uh, well, they were very, very strong uh, as you'll see later on. Now, before we check out the game, uh, the game comes as a suggestion from Shamil Makov. So uh, thank you for that. I, Like I said, I, I haven't seen the game and I was not aware of this event that it had happened. I, I, I'm not aware of all events, but it's just that uh, this one featuring such a nice game, uh, you know, I, uh, one would think that uh, I would have seen it by now. And there's been a lot of talk about it, uh, after, especially after this game. It's been all over the news in every newspaper. Uh, you know, uh, I, I will put, I'll even put a link uh, to the New York Times um, uh, that was published after this game was played. And there's a, even a YouTube link with actual footage from this event uh, where you can check out... Um, well, uh, uh, what's been going on. So this is a nice photo. It's not from this event. It's actually from an event uh, two years ago where uh, two of the uh, same opponents met. And here you can see a very interesting position on the board. Uh, it was also a simultaneous exhibition and this game ended in a draw. However, this game that I'm showing you now did most certainly did not end in a draw. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. So Kasparov with the white pieces opens with e4. As one usually does when he holds a simultaneous exhibition, he's white on all boards and all of his 25 opponents have the black pieces. So e4, we have e6 by Sharansky. Uh, we have d4 and d5. And Natan Sharansky, uh, at the moment that this game was played, was the Minister of Industry and Trade uh, in, in Israel. So here uh, Kasparov grabs on d5, we have e captures on d5, going for the exchange variation of the French, e captures, that's not a captures, e captures on d5, and now just continues developing with knight to f3. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now bishop to d3. Uh, we often mention when there is an exchange variation of the French, uh, that famous quote that uh, Mikhail Tal said that uh, uh, if you play the uh, uh, the exchange variation against the French, then you uh, you, you basically don't want a win. Uh, that's not how the quote actually goes. It goes more like... Um, I uh, can't really remember, but it's like uh, you, you, if you're, if you're only satisfied uh, uh, with a, with a draw with the white pieces, then you're probably going to lose the game. So here uh, we have bishop to e7, and Kasparov now plays h3. We have knight to c6, and already here, after Kasparov makes his uh, seventh move, he plays a3. Uh, we have a position that has never occurred before or after this game was played. So after move seven, we have a completely new game. Uh, and here Sharansky goes knight to e4. So what do you play here? Kasparov, of course, strikes in the center. He plays c4. Now the pawn is pressured. If you capture, you lose the knight here. We have bishop to f5, and here Kasparov just castles. We have d captures on, e, uh, on c4, now that the knight is defended here. Bishop captures, uh, and now black also castles. And here uh, Kasparov makes a very interesting decision. He doesn't continue development with something like knight to c3 or maybe uh, rook to e1. He goes d5. He grabs some more space in the center, but this, uh, as you'll see in the game, uh, really does uh, wonders for black. So here, knight to a5, attacking the bishop on c4, it's undefended, bishop to a2, Kasparov keeps the bishop on this long diagonal, and now c5, asking, uh, do you want to capture on c6 en passant, uh, or do you want to not do that and keep your pass pawn? Kasparov, of course, uh, really enjoys his... Um, uh, protected pass pawn, so he just continues developing. We have rook to e1, and now comes a move that uh, really, uh, well, really puts a lot of problems for white. Uh, here, he plays c4. And now the problem is, how do you develop here with white? This bishop now isn't really doing anything. The pawn is nicely defended here. Uh, you can't really play something like b4 or b3 because the knight defends the b3 square. Uh, you, you could play something like this, but then just comes C captures on B3, and it doesn't matter that the queen and the bishop are defending it, because, for example, bishop captures and queen to B6. Now, with a double attack here uh, on the bishop, and also the queen and the knight are attacking the F2 pawn, because the F2 pawn is now very weak. So here, uh, white is just lost. So what can Kasparov do here? Well, to play this, he would have to play a super passive move. He would have to play something like bishop to D2, and then we'd get something like bishop to F6, attacking the pawn here, and after we defended this now comes knight to c5 and now with these two knights controlling b3 this knight controlling d3 the bishop controlling d3 uh, again it's playable but very 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 good for black 
So here, Kasparov, uh, not wanting to play such a passive position, played knight to d2, but this allows black uh, to start uh, the attack. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out how to, how to start the attack here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on... Uh, doing it i know all of you uh, all of you played it because it's i mean it's it's there uh, so for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it's knight captures an f2 of course we're going to play this as now bishop the c5 check is coming and the king is out of its um uh, well out of his house so here we have king captures an f2 and now bishop to c2 with check so what do you play here here kasparov played rook to e3 he decided to give uh, give back a little bit of material uh to avoid the uh, well to avoid the going up the board uh but the going up the board that doesn't really help white all that much because here after queen to d6 check again you really have nothing to play for uh, if you play king to h4 then queen to f4 check and you're getting checkmated uh g4 we're gonna play bishop to f2 check and after the king moves g6 will just be checkmate so what you would have to do after queen to d6 check you'd have to play some like knight e5 which uh, okay blocks the check but now uh, we just bring the rook in rook a to e8 with a double attack on the knight and again this is coming there is no defending this uh, not a lot you can do here you could bring another knight here knight to f3 but then we just uh, attack the pin piece with f6 and if you try running away with the king uh, we're just gonna capture and now again you do not want to allow any discoveries so probably rook captures queen captures king to h1 and it seems like uh, white survived but c3 completely ruins uh <laughs> white's day uh, there's the problem of just C captures on B2, which wins uh, even more material. And if you capture this, then comes Queen captures on C3. And now, how do you how do you uh, defend this? The bishop cannot move. Uh, the, the rook is under attack. Or rook to B1 doesn't really help. Any uh, if rook to B1, the bishop is attacking it. You can just play captures, and then bishop captures is just a, a, a again a winning position for Black. So here, after bishop to c5, Kasparov did not want to start uh, uh, running with the king. He played rook to e3. He wants to give back some material to, uh, to help out uh, with the defense. And this is a very happily accepted bishop captures an e3 with check. King captures and now rook to e8 with check, bringing in another attacker with check. Uh, here, Sharansky could have played queen to d6, uh, que uh, queen to b6 with check. This is even more deadly as it prevents the king from uh, going king f2, king to g1. Here, the king would have to go up the board and only now queen to d6 check. And this is now much, much deadlier uh, because now you don't really uh, you don't really have a good move. If you go something like uh, king to e3, then queen to g3 is coming and then you are not hiding your king anywhere for, for the rest of the game. And if you accept the bishop sacrifice, then rook 8 to e8 and now the king is within grasp of the black pawns there's uh, no no escaping this if you start running away we just play f5 check king h4 queen f4 check and now again g4 rook to f6 and now rook to h6 will be checkmate uh, there is no defense against this so after king captures an e3 uh, uh, this was uh, a bit more precise however rook to e8 check was played and now king to f2 now kasparov very happily starts running away with his king King, uh, queen captures on d5 was played in king to g1. So this gives um, a new life to the position. And now maybe Kasparov can survive this. Rook a to d8. But again, what do you play here? The bishop does absolutely nothing. The knight cannot move. Uh, you, you can't really develop here. So Kasparov basically does the only thing he can. King to h1. And now b5. Cementing this pawn on c4. And now the knight can move. The knight is no longer needed here. And now we're going to bring the knight into the game as well. So here, queen to f1 unpinning uh, but uh again not really doing all that much yes now the knight can move but the knight has nowhere to move to that's oh, that's a really big problem so here bishop to d3 uh really pushing that queen back to the corner queen to g1 and now knight to c6 slowly but surely starting to bring this uh, knight into the game uh, we have knight to b1, now trying to activate uh, his pieces a little bit, but now knight to d4. And again, what do you play here? Here, Kasparov was happy to trade off uh, some of uh, some of black's attackers, but uh, this is his only active piece, basically. So here, knight captures on d4 was played, queen captures, and now... Uh, what do you play here? Uh, if you play queen captures on d4 and trade a queen right away, rook captures. Uh, what do you what do you play here? Uh, knight to, knight to c3, for example, rook to e1 check, and this bishop is never leaving here. This bishop can move uh, or 
uh, even stay here, we can bring the rook into the game, pick up the bishop, it's completely unplayable for white. So instead, Kasparov, uh, after this queen captures on the uh, on d4, he played knight to c3, but now, again, the position is completely winning for black, so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for uh, Nathan Sharansky while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the simplest and uh, basically only way to win this game. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on g1 with check. Uh, simple and elegant. King captures on g1, rook to e1 with check, king to f2, and now rook d to e8. And now uh, black has a variety of moves how he can win this, but there's even a bigger, bigger problem for white because white does not have a single move here. You can't move the bishop, you lose the rook. If you try and move this bishop, you don't really have a square. If you try bishop to b1, then we can capture this bishop. And now again, you can't capture because your rook is hanging. So what can you play here? Uh, nothing really. Here, Kasparov played knight captures on b5. But it was also in this position after playing this that Kasparov just resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, to give you an example, black can very simply uh, just play rook to f1 check, for example, king g3, and now rook to e1, and that's it. There's no defending this. This is going to fall. Uh, if, if you can grab a pawn, we're just going to collect material here, captures, captures, and now uh, it's completely winning. It's not just that you're uh, down uh, down in exchange, for example, uh, like we have a rook for a knight here, but also this bishop is just trapped and uh, this is happening. There, there's no stopping this uh, or, or even this. So we have to bring the knight into the game, knight to c6. Now the knight will come to b4 to defend the bishop here, but still rook c2 is enough. And now after knight to b4, we're still going to capture on b2. And there's, again, not much you can do here. We're just going to start uh, pushing our pass pawn. If king f3, we're going to play bishop to f1, even go after these pawns. g4, just c3. Uh, king e3, we're going to play rook to e2 with check. Now, if the king goes in front of the bishop, then we're just going to capture this with a discovery. So the king has to go up the board. c2 will be played. And now we either sacrifice the knight for the pawn, and then it's completely winning. Or we try to hold knight d3. We cover the c1 square. Rook to e1, very sneaky, guarding c1. And now if knight captures, we just bring a queen into the game. And if uh, white doesn't capture, well, we're just going to eliminate the knight and then bring a queen into the game. So let's say just capture c1 queen. And now black has a queen. White doesn't. It's completely winning here for for Sharansky. So incredible, incredible achievement. And um, uh, as usual, Kasparov was very angry after losing this. I, I think he lost three games and drew four. And uh, all of those seven, uh, seven opponents w were Russians. So he was... Uh, uh, he, he was not very happy with that. But like I said, there's a very, very extensive article that New York Times published in 1996 after this game. It will be in the description below. So do check it out. It's very, very nice. Uh, and also, uh, here's a very nice uh, photo. Uh, I've shown you this one. Uh, this is the two of them from 1994. But they've also met once again uh, in uh, 2018, uh, as Kasparov said on his uh, Twitter Twitter page. Uh, here, Nathan Sharansky and I are at the March 7, 2018 New York um, a championship event uh, honoring his life and retirement. As head of Jewish agency, I asked the great Ukrainian chess composer Edward um, uh, Ela Elazian uh, for a problem in homage to Sharansky's own life. A trapped knight escapes to deliver mate. So as you can see, uh, the two uh, meet, uh, meet again. So uh, this game is available on chess games and it is... Uh, like a published game, the one uh, on this photo is not uh, the one from 1994 where, where they drew the game. But uh, as it would seem, the two of them played two games. Uh, one uh, was drawn and one was won by Sharansky. Uh, so he, uh, as I understand, I did read a little bit uh, about him. Uh, he was uh, very, very interested in chess. He was a champion of his... Uh, uh, of his, uh, I don't know what exactly, but he he was a uh, very strong, and um, he said that he, uh, as as a young uh, young uh, chess player, he was dreaming of becoming a world champion. So even though uh, he chose politics instead of chess, he still has uh, I it would seem a positive score against uh, uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov. So yeah, uh, very, very impressive stuff. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I really have enjoyed this. I have never seen this game and uh, I've never heard of Mr. Sharansky. So uh, very, very impressive stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very, very nice suggestion. 
Uh, I would like to thank Anirudh Kamadgi, uh, Sandeep Menon, uh, David Baguli, uh, Christoph Diegelman, and John Austin for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, the prize next to the contribution means that uh, this contribution has been made for the tournament that is happening on Leeches. So these contributions will be added to the prize fund uh, that... Um, that I'm contributing. So do join us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to be streaming the event. So uh, perhaps you will have your own game showcased. Uh, and maybe you even, uh, you know, do, do very well. Why wouldn't you? You're, you're a great chess player. Uh, so uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga. Checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon. And have an excellent rest of your day.